be trouble. Look after a horse. I take horse, Miss McGuire. Dell, is anything wrong? Len, I'm worried to death about Dad. I haven't heard a word from him since he went to Sydney. Well, the banks make you wait these days, especially for a big loan. But there's been three ships in from Sydney, and there's not a sign of him yet. He... he hasn't been himself for quite some time now. Don't I know it. Oh, Len, I can't stand it any longer. I'm afraid something's happened to him. Would you like me to trace him? Yes. Y yes, please, Len. All right, I will. Now, look, you go home and don't you worry. I'll find him. Thanks, Liam. Goodbye, John. Goodbye. See you. And to you, Mr. McGuire. <laughs> I needn't ask how you are. That's not how we are, it's how we're going to be, that matter. I've brought a bit of cheer for one or all. Oh, it's against the rules, <laughs> but we'll change them again. Thank you, Mr. Archibald. My night's lodging on a bit of wetness for yourself. Mr. McGuire, it's a fine rain we'll all have tonight. <laughs> ah, we will. Uh, we will. Uh, <laughs> be a good cheer, lad. Michael McGuire's here. One day. Come on again now. Oh, it's very gay. For free drink with every bag. I'll tell all my friends. Uh -uh. I come from old Ireland. My name's Mick McCann. I came to Australia in search of good land. There was no brighter buckle than me to be found. When I landed in Sydney with 25 pounds singing to relay, relay, relay. Singing. Who's the old clown? Comes and goes. Always drunk as a lord and pass on the bottle as free as you please. Sing the rest of it. Babe. Give us some more. Ah, there's the boy that can make the go of a song. Come on, son. I never could sing without the music. Give us a tune now. Baby was sleeping. His mother His was weeping. His mother weeping. was weeping. That's right. Her husband was far o'er the wild raging sea. Oh, Bonza. And the wines they were swelling round the fisherman swelling. As she cried, Janice. Son, my son, there's no blacker sin than abandoning your own flesh and blood. <laughs> sin? All he ever did was to stick his kid in some orphanage here in Sydney. The boy ran off and he's about ten and ain't been heard of since. You call that a sin to get the shakes over, mate? Five hundred pounds to any man who can bring me word to me son, Dennis. Here I am, Dad, your own little Dennis. But no, no, Dad, it's me that's Dennis. Let's see the color of your money, Dad. I own a cattle station, one of the biggest. And what are you doing here? It's the Lord's will that I sink lower and lower. Well, here's helping you at the bottom, you frame of all wreck. <laughs> Wait. 
the old man alone. I said leave him alone. Come on, Dad. Let's have a drink together and forget all about it. What's your name? Where are you from? Lando. He's found his little Dennis again is. <laughs> Dennis, is that your name? Come on, Dad. It's time to go to bed. No, but tell uh, me the truth. Is your name Dennis? We'll talk about it tomorrow. I only want to know where you're yeah, from. There we go. Easy. Just tell uh, me where you're from. Uh, That's all. Just... We'll talk about it tomorrow. Now, why don't you give us another song? That's how you will, Dennis. That's how you will. My song, it is ended. My story is done. My mouth is as dry as a breech of a gun. A bird never flew with one wing, so it is said. So we'll just have one more and then we'll go to bed. Keep it for me. I'll be back if my luck's bad. You'll be back if your luck's good. Played in luck tonight, sir. Never travel fast. Well, it's not every night in Sydney a man bets two thousand pounds, double or nothing. Yeah. Put some cheer among your colleagues. Good luck to you, Mister. I'll take your money or your life. I take your money or your life. Now empty your pockets, please. An Englishman? You positively reek with nostalgia for me. Come on, come on, the money. You behave like an apache. Forgive me, but I happen to be without money. Here, yeah, I trust this will help. I beg your pardon. Five pounds ten? Come on, come on, the rest. How much did you expect that bare little bodkin to fetch you? Four thousand quid. You were eavesdropping, friend. Had you witnessed my last play, you would have seen my entire fortune go. My pockets were as empty as yours. I'll make sure of that, if you don't mind. Quite desperate for money, aren't you? Take any chance to get it. Any? If I not twist a fortune, so would I. And I know the way to entice Lady Luck to smile on both of us. Out of which side of our mouth? Where the gold teeth show. Fenner. You try to rob Fenner? Rob is an ugly word. Money should only be left in the hands of those who know how to spend it. How do I know you won't lead me into a trap? You don't know. But you said any chance. I knew you were a judge of character. I want half. For which of the cardinal sins? Gambling? A lady. I want to go... Don't tell me. I want to go home. I'm sick of knocking around. Oil fields, gold. I want to go home. Nobody goes home. You'll chase that rainbow till the day you die. You always so jolly before a job? Before or after. I never feel any regrets. I died years ago. Cheated the hangman of his bait. To live, one must first die. All right, Socrates, how do we get up to Fenner's office? I've got the course all charted. Go in the usual way, but separately, and once inside, follow me. And don't try anything funny. May I uh, borrow my fortune, please? I may have to invest it for our mutual benefit. When you're ready. When you're ready.
Senator boys, I bet ten sovereigns he heads. Ten sovereigns he heads. When you're ready. When you're ready. There you go. One of each, no result. When you like, fill them up again. Tails. Tails is right. What's the idea? I had to wait for you. How could I better spend the time? Head for that door. There you go. Two heads. Ain't you game tonight? Certainly isn't. I think I'll try the cards. Good luck. Pointed in him. This is the third time tonight I'm sending him money. You needn't bother shutting the door. This gentleman's leaving. Well, speak up, man. You said you wanted to see me. Well, the, the truth is, I lost 4,000 pounds tonight. Everything I had. So you tried your luck, and your luck was bad. Well, please, Mr. Fenner, if you could give me back just half of it. It's my first time. Your first time? You've never gambled away anybody else's money before. Never been in prison. Never toyed with the idea of suicide. <laughs> My friend, you haven't lived. Well, I'll never gamble again. I must ask you to excuse me. I'm a very busy man. Good night. Mr. Fenner. And um, if you do decide on suicide, be good enough not to do it on the premises. Bad for business, you know. Because you didn't. Next time you play with that little toy, put it where it'll do the most good. Murder. All right. Murder wasn't part of our bargain. No. Keep everybody inside. We've heard a shot in Fenner's office. Let's have my swag. 
Come on, swag. Dennis, my son, you've come back. Don't try this nonsense again. If we hang, we'll hang together. Dennis, wait. Come on, come on, shut him up. He claims paternity? Come on, let's get going. He's some crazy joker thinks he owns a big cattle station. Mistakes me for a long lost son. Well, I'm charmed, charmed to meet your father. Scheduled to sail until morning at nine. That's quite all right. I think our friend here will find timely use for his berth tonight. Oh, it's Mr. McGuire, isn't it? Uh, yes, I'm afraid the old gentleman imbibed one too many. Oh, I say, he does look a bit bashed. Uh, celebrating a little business transaction. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we're going to his station. We'd appreciate accommodation. Well, if you haven't booked them in advance. Well, uh, I'm sure something will be arranged. Uh, will you show us to Mr. McGuire's cabin? Certainly, certainly, sir. This way. See you about sleep well. Hello, Mac. Well, you certainly turned on a big one celebrating our deal. Deal? What deal? I never saw you before in my life. Well, you see what drink will do. Here we consummate a deal involving 500 head of stock. And you paid me in full, I think, huh? That's right, Mac. A pound a head. Oh, yes, drifting back. It's drifting back. 500 in cash, wasn't it? Across the table. You remember now? Yes, I remember. I remember all the swindling larrikins who ever tried the little games on me. Slippery-tongued rascals, the pair of you. I beg your pardon. Oh, none of your fine manners. They never were the mark of an honest man. <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, don't you know? All right, I'll learn you your own trade. First, you spot a man of property who's under the drink. Second, when he's out of it, you tell him that you paid him cash for what was his. And third, when he can't find a penny of it, you tell him that he must have spent it when he was in his cups. Well, that swindles as safe as a flea on a dog, if the dog doesn't bite back. That's enough, Mac. Take my advice. Don't try to warm your hands in our pockets. In your pockets? Who's trying to steal my stuff? And who's already got our 500? I'll get the captain to clap you an iron. If I may interpose, sir, why not look in your pocket? See, it's all there, sir. Five hundred pounds. Well, I, I guess I must have been run over me usual. Apologies accepted, sir. I dare say one can't be too careful of strangers in this part of the world. It's lucky for us we met you in Sydney. The banks recommended you. Well, the banks did a good work for me, didn't they now? Resounding adjective, sir. If there's any advice you can give us on the purchase of a station, we'd be forever in your debt, sir. What, you want to buy a station now, with the drought on? Isn't that the time to start? Land and cattle are going for tuppence? Of course, if you're willing to gamble on the rain coming before your feet and water come. Well, we're willing, aren't we, partner? We came to make our fortune. There's no turning back now. Drought hit everything and everybody. I see the country is turning into a dust heap. Over two million cattle and twenty million sheep have perished in the drought so far. Good morning, Mr. McGuire. 
We lay out three outfits. You know my size. You can guess theirs. 29 waist, 15 and a half collar. 33 waist, 17 collar. We're going over to Jim's. Bring him over there. Jim's out of business. You don't tell me. That's right. The first and last is the only pub left. Well, let's go to the first and last. Enchanting. Bucolic paradise. Ideal retreat from the maddening herd. I dare say one isn't troubled with too much company out here, sir. Company enough. Dingoes, crows, flies, rabbits, ants, centipedes, snakes, bigger than a man yet lives inside of it. Look, far as I can see, all mine, the work of my life. I lived on possum and pigweed. Grub 10,000 square mile out of the bush, I did. I, I. I had the world, and I had time to think. To think of the wrong I'd done with son. He's asleep. old gentleman believed me to be his son. With what I know, it would be simple to convince him of it, even when he's sober. <laughs> that would make you the heir apparent. And give you a chance to blackmail me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but you've been dealt from the bottom of the deck again. I've been dealt? <laughs> I have a chance to steal a station, but it is 10,000 square miles of dust. Half is yours. <laughs> You grow too soon. It hasn't rained for three years. The odds grow better every day. When it rains, this sewer will flow with gold. Then what's yours will also be mine. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried to death about you. Thank you for at least bringing him home. No, no, Del, no. These gentlemen are my guests. Mr. Gamble and Mr. Connor, my daughter. We understand your anger, Miss McGuire, but you're quite mistaken about your father. He's overcome with fatigue, heat. And he should be in bed. I'm sorry. Please come in and make yourselves at home. stockmen without money to pay them. I tried to keep things going with the help of our black fellows, but it's impossible. I couldn't borrow a penny. The droughts hit the banks, too. Did you even try? All of them. All of them. Everything you've worked for your whole life. I just can't stand by and see it burn up. I, I did get some money. 500 pounds. I sold 500 head. Well, who'd buy stock now? My two guests. They're out here to look for a station. You sold stock for future delivery? Why, you know that they won't even live through the month if it doesn't rain. How could you do such a thing? Dad, what's happened to you? You gave my father 500 pounds. Yes. Well, 
I'm sorry, but we cannot guarantee delivery. We couldn't help hearing what you said to your father. Please use the money any way you see fit. That's very kind of you, but it's impossible. We're gambling against the rain. We'll double our purchase. But you don't know the odds. What we lose, we'll win in experience. You'd be throwing your money away. I'm sorry. I'll instruct Kathleen to prepare your rooms right away. Well, there goes our hideout and our fortune. Unless we change our mind. Not you. I don't want simple larceny turned into a Greek tragedy. She is your sister. Unfortunately. But if I know my muslin, you will fail. Well, I'd better put father back to work. Shrink your head. Thank you, lad. And none of your insults. Just a bit too much sun. <laughs> Liquid sun, you mean? <laughs> bit of trouble getting home, was I? <laughs> no, I've seen worse. You always blow off when it starts feeding on you? Well, what starts feeding? Well, I never met a man yet who swore for pleasure. Uh, rambled with the heat, did I? A bit. What did I say? I don't remember. Well, we'll be pushing on soon. Yes, but where? I, I thought you were staying till I found your station. No, Mac, no, you're not the right man to do it. Look at the way you run your own. But what's that got to do with my powers of judgment? Sure, the drought's God's It punishment. isn't the drought ruining you, Mac. Your daughter said the stock could be saved if you had a mind to do it. As it is, she won't go through with our deal. Can't guarantee delivery. Nothing can be saved that bears the mark of McGuire. Well, now, don't tell me it's the law's will for you to lie on your back and do nothing. No, look, I won't have any tongue wagging at me, guest or no guest. I know you're kind. Always wallowing in your own trough and never mind who you drag in with you. But who are you to judge me, you young whelp? And who can judge you better? My father gave me the same hand you're dealing your daughter. I know what it means to be left alone, made to shift for myself. Your, your father deserted you? I don't want to talk about it. You started something, Blaster, no, finish it. All right. I know what your daughter's feeling. I've felt it all my life. And if there's any way I can help her, I'll stay. And as for any man who deserts his own... Wait. Connor. Who are you? What do you mean, who am I? Dennis Connor, what of it? Dennis. Dennis, did you say? Yes, Dennis. Baker, McGinnis, Ford, Thompson, Hall, Marshall, Randall, Clark, Campbell, Stanley, Khan, Nobby, Collins, O'Malley. Well, that's all the men I can use till the rains come. Ah, uh, come on, pick your faces off the floor, the lot of you. You'll all be working soon. Sure, the weather'll be changing, lads. Give them a drop of the wet stuff, Walter. Did I hear you right? You heard. On me. You judge me right, Dennis. But now I'm back at work to save all I can for those that follow me. This change. He's himself again. And you brought it on. I'll never be able to thank you enough. Never. What's 
wrong. It is said that a man's eyes are the mirrors of his soul. With you, the blacker the deed, the more angelic you look. Hello, Beagle Beak. Me darling. Oh, oh, you're in bad company, Max. And how's the Rosa Charlotte? And have you heard the news? It's himself back at work again. Sure, and it's the eighth wonder of the world. Hello, Beagle Beak. Hello, Max. Hello, Len. Wait up at the house. We've got a bit more work to finish here. I'm glad to see somebody's getting a day's work around these parts. I'll wait. Copper. Right. Kelly, your coves will muster the stock from the eastern end of the run. Martin, you'll move the stock from the two holes in the western paddock. I'll muster from up there in the north. What about water on the way back? You won't find any. Well, in their condition, they won't last more than four days without it. Then we'll have to make it back in three. We've got enough feed for a month, and if it rains within the month, we'll have enough stock left to build a herd again. If it rains. It'll rain. God willing, it'll rain this month. Now, come on. Come out of the storeroom and get your tucker. Oh, Dad, Len's waiting to see you. Ah, you see him, my dear. Tell him I've some work to do. All right. I see you're busy. We'll see you later. All right. Hello, Matt. Dad's busy, Len. Can I help? You'll do. Let's go into Dad's study. Right. Let's run for it. Invite the noose? He's taking our measure now. Maybe, but we wouldn't get far running. Oh, you're right. Not with a back track on our heels. Those devils can trail an ant crawling on a stone. We've got to face it. Brazen it out. Well, Matt, what have you done? I caught him butchering one of your stock. I was just trying to get some tucker from my people. You're a thief and a liar. He said you'd let him work off the cost of the beast. Does the law say my young brothers and sisters have got to starve when there's plenty of tucker around? That cow was about gone anyway. The crows would have picked it clean by tomorrow. The law. It's on the side of the crows. You've had enough, Del. I'll take him in. No, no, Len, I... I did say that he could work off the cost. In fact, he's... he's about to start. Now. You're letting me off? And giving me a job? You'll come along on the muster, in our team. Gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Trooper Leonard. I was engaged to him when I was six. And I've been in love with her ever since. Oh. Gamble. Well, how are you? Oh, uh, this is Mr. Dennis Con Connor. Hello, Dennis. And I've always wanted to meet a real Bobby of the Bush. Now I'll get you a match. Thank you. Uh, tell me, is it true that you can trail a man by the smell of the tobacco he uses? <laughs> That's easy. My tracker can trail a man by the impression his shadow leaves on a rock. A week after he's passed it. <laughs> you might as well give up. You'll never match tall stories with Len. He was born in the bush. Oh, will you be eating with us, Mr. Leonard? Set a place, Kathleen. Don't bother, Joe. I'm Joe Morales. Oh, what a pity. I was looking forward to hearing about all those dangerous criminals you tracked. And brought the rope. Try to give you the pleasure soon. What did you say your name was? Gamble. John W. Gamble. Well, cheerio. Don't bother seeing me out, Del. You better get ready for lunch. Bye, then. I won't be long. He heard your name. Why'd he ask it again? Copper's trick. Make you think they've seen you before. So if the shoe fits... Well, does it? There you have me. I told you I traveled extensively. Matt! Well, you're in the clear, thanks to Miss McGuire. See that you give our Mac a fair crack of the whip and you'll be all right. Jack. Who's that? He 
He brought him here. Guess what he's telling you. It's too far to hear, and I hate to guess. Once we cross the creek, we'll split into three teams. Each team will spread out and muster any strays that are fit to travel and bring them on. Kelly, get going with your pack horses. Off you go, Chilla. What? Come on, Nobby. about him, no guess at all. He's a copper. I know it slips your mind easily, but no more murders. Then shin up the family tree. The sooner the old man proclaims you his son, the safer for both of us. I've got him, babe. Ain't we, win? You said your father left you. Do you remember him at all? I don't want to talk about it. Jealous? Jealous? I don't know what you mean. Well, Dennis seems to claim all your father's attention. Kindred spirits. I had a brother by that name. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's not that. We, we just don't know what happened to him. Deserting dingo stuck me away in a hole when I was a kid. An outreach, was it? I ran off. If I ever find him. Dad, it's time we sent Matt ahead. How about camping at the Nine Mile? Yes. Matt, we're going to camp at the Nine Mile. You go straight ahead. Right. I found you. I lost the others. Want a drink? Thanks. What happened? Snake got him. What are those marks on his ankle? I don't know. Answer me. Leg iron marks. That's better. Keep at it. 
a cop is now. You're working for the trooper. No, I'm not. You came to the house together. I didn't. He brought me under arrest. Mr. McGuire gave me a chance. I'm here working off the price of a cow I stole. He'd kill you if he knew you saw that mark. Now, you know how easy it is to get into trouble. Give him a chance. Don't worry about me. Good boy. Take my horse and get his. I'll bind it up. They'll crack up within a mile. How can you tell? They all look alike to me. Well, this one by his ears. See how they droop? He starts dragging his toes. And leaving that kind of track, forget him. That one's got a guts full of mud. Where brown summer and death have made it. Oh, it isn't always like this. A little rain and the land gives back more than it takes away.
Why don't you give them a rest before they all drop? Oh, not yet, lad. At 10 o'clock, we'll count them through the heat of the day till 4. We've got to keep poking along if we're going to get them to water in time. did we lose? Forty. It's only the first morning. Oh, well, here's hoping and praying that Kelly and Burton didn't fare worse.
Hmm? 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 I thought you swore off. That I have. <laughs> it's against the bite of snakes, uh, carrying that now. <laughs> ah, it's blessed a man could be if it two children like that. Moonlight night and romance springs to life. Thanks. Sleep well. How can you stand it? Oh, you get used to the dingoes. Oh, it's not only the dingoes. I mean this loneliness, this isolation. This big, awful emptiness. I've never felt lonely here. Never? Well, you can feel lonely anywhere. It isn't the place that makes you lonely. Oh, I don't belong here. Never will. Do you know where you belong? Where there's life. Any street in London, any boulevard in Paris. Then why did you come here? To make a pile so I can get back. Others have thought that. And like them, you'll be trapped by your own greed. You'll never think you have enough. Oh, you'll make a pile. And then you'll stay another year to make a little more. And then a drought or a bushfire or a flood will come and ruin you. And you'll start all over again. The story of the Australian damned. Broken men whose hearts are in... England or the continent, and whose feet are stuck here. That's a great future, you predict. It can be great, but only if you forget your other world and give this one the love it needs and wants. Del. Good night. Good night, Miss McGuire. Del. I got something to tell you. No, it, it couldn't wait. You're drinking again. And I thought it was all over. Why? Why? What made you start again? I couldn't stand the thought of bringing harm to my own child. Harm? What harm? I brought two strangers home. I lied when I said they were my friends. But they are your friends. They've done wonders for you. True, but it's, it's you I'm worried about. You know nothing of him. Who he is. <laughs> so that's it. You saw me with Dennis. Oh, Dad. <laughs> Do you think I could love someone before I really knew him? His heart isn't where mine is or yours. And he hates it here. Oh, darling. If I could only be speaking what's in my heart. You don't have to. I know.
stop. There's only one thing will keep them from water. The soap they lived on dried up. Gone for days with only a few drops of water. He promises to make rain in return for a drink. Dad, you must let them drink. No, it's not only this drink. They'll wait till it rains. What else can the poor people do? Dora. Kabi Jigla. robbery like this can bring on rain. Did you ever see it, Mac? No, but I won't say it can't happen. There's no telling the way of the Aborigines. I've seen one of them point a bone at a man and wish him dead. And dead he was in a few days. Oh, call it magic or witchcraft. But I tell you, there's a lot about them that no white man will ever know. His friend's all right, too, even if he is a... Even if he's fat. I, uh... I can't tell you. That's the likes of you. Never a tidbit of news for the poor slave of the stove, who's fit to be filling his stomach all right, but never to hear anything of what goes on around her. Oh, not that she wants to know, mind you. For a gossiping tongue is the devil's own helper. Can you, uh, can you keep a secret? If you don't tell me at once, I'll let you have the back of my hand. Well, Mr. Gamble was bitten by a snake. When I took off his boot and slid his leggings, I... Hello, Matt. I'm sure, and it would be you. Me darling, have you got a fresh cup of tea? Now watch this. Each group represents one of the creatures they live on. Bull roarers. Their sound scares their women away. An Aboriginal woman is forbidden to attend all rituals. And these are goannas, lizards. The great delicacy of the bush. These are cockatoos. Sit down, Len. Uh, no, thanks, Jill. I won't be stopping long. 
Well, Mr. Leonard, what's new in the world of crime? My jail's empty. Well, that must be lonely for you. I don't mind. Look. Look at the sky. Is it rain? Rain clouds. Is it possible? Will the apples really make it rain? Rain. I can hardly believe it. They've convinced me. Well, it's a long ride in the wet. Cheerio, everybody. Now that's what comes of putting stock in hymns. They pray for rain and get a dust storm. It's that devil himself that answers their prayers. Now, will you look at this, Jew? Fit for a camel now. Mr. McGuire, I've got to talk to your father. He's in the house. What's wrong? It's the windmill. <laughs> Mr. McGuire, the windmill cable snapped. If it isn't fixed right away, the wind will knock the whole thing apart. Our only source of water. The men reckon it's worth their life to try to fix it in this blow. Dad, you've got to talk to them. I'll deal with it. Drive down with me. I came up on the buggy. chance to get in solid. That windmill's their life. Let's save it. What you really mean is you want me to do it. Well, if the windmill blows to pieces, there goes your hideout. It's your life as well as theirs. It's a convenient way to get rid of me. Self-preservation. You bring out the same instinct in me. I'd gladly stake my life to get rid of you. Fair enough. For a bet this size, I'd like you to call mine. Yes. So be it. Remember this about me, Nipper. I hold one thing sacred, a game of chance. After all, I paid to see your hand.
yours will be the end of you. The men told you. How do you fix it? You're that chain. Use this rope. She's crossed me. You don't have to eavesdrop. You think McGuire didn't see the pure, noble light of love shining in your eyes when you took that girl in your arms this afternoon? What do you think he's telling her in there? Marry you and live happily ever after? He's telling her she is your sister. What are you going to do about it? Don't tell me. Every time I go into business with a partner, sooner or later, he develops a conscience. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sick of watching you wrestle with your pious little soul. I'm not your brother, and I'm not your son. I said I'm not your brother. You're not my brother. Oh, Dennis. Oh, 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 oh. Don't, Dennis. Lying won't improve matters. I knew he was my son. Knew it the day he came here. I should have told you. What are you saying? Is this true? Who are you? My name is Richard Connor. Among other things, I'm wanted for the shooting of that gambler in Sydney. But, but, but every word you said made me believe. A man believes what he wants to believe. Rot your lion soul. If it's the truth you're telling me, I'll kill you. Yes, you'd kill him. But not because of what he's done to me. Even now, you only think of yourself of what it means to you that he's not your son, of what it means that the ghost you thought yourself rid of is back again to plague you. Don't point the gun at him. His deception is no worse than yours. lighter now with that load off your chest.
turned to see you. Before. Sorry. No, you're not. I can't blame you. Dell, may I say something to you? Don't worry, I'm not going to make any excuses. It was a dirty business. Rotten right from the very beginning to the end. I'm not going to tell you I didn't know what I was doing. But for what it's worth, you were never a part of it. You've got to believe that. The rest of it was a masquerade. The way you were concerned. It was real. Stop it, Dennis. Stop it. It's the truth, I swear it. If it weren't, I wouldn't be here. Len went for the doctor. He thinks you're badly hurt. No such luck. I'll live to stand trial. What'll happen to him? He said it. You'll stand your trial, no question of that. But you did save the life of a constable, and Len will not forget it. He'll stand beside you, and he'll tell it to the judge, too. You've got a chance, boy. Thanks, Mac. You didn't have to say that. Ah, that's all right. Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> 